Hey folks, this is Vint with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Dwarfheim. This is a game that you can find on Steam's Early Access program for about 25 bucks. Now I stress Early Access, that means everything that you're about to see here is most definitely subject to change, including this particular review. In fact, I had meant to stream this today, but the game frustrated me so much that I'm going to hex that and just wait until the game develops a bit more. So, what is Dwarfheim all about? Well, it's a cooperative RTS, though you can play single player if you want to. There is a class system. Whenever you create a game, you'll be able to choose between one of three classes. So, there's a builder class, there's a miner class, and there's a warrior class. The builder class sort of supports the team by creating these healing units and can put down defenses and housing. Um, you can concoct brews and uh, put down farms, that kind of thing. And then you've got the warrior who will train an army and defend the town. Uh, they will also um, be in charge of slaying creatures going out into the world and you know, causing havoc that way. The miner goes underground. There's two layers. There's an overworld and an underworld. And underground, they'll be creating this factorio-like factory where they'll be mining ore and sending it to a warehouse. Now, they're going to be putting multiple buildings in between in order to refine this ore, to sort it, and other things like that. The reason why I'm holding off on playing this game any further is because it's incredibly frustrating. First, let, let's just talk about what the game does right. First of all, the concept. I love the idea of a cooperative RTS where everyone has a specific role. When I play, say, Rise of Nations or StarCraft with somebody, we all start on even footing. You know, I create my town, my partner creates their town, and we comp stomp the AI. And sometimes we'll coordinate, we'll go, okay, I'll, I'll concentrate on the archer upgrades and the ranged. You go ahead and do flying or whatever, and then we'll coordinate that way. Whereas in this game, you're, you're sort of focused into one specific role, and you focus on that. And you're sort of like the backbone of your particular playstyle. You have to make sure that you're doing your part so that everyone else can feed off you and vice versa. I like that. That's a really cool idea. Um, that being said, the re the real-time strategy game element sucks. The, the AI is atrocious. A number of times, my units have just sat there doing nothing. Um, mining is probably the biggest headache. The biggest headache. It's just overly convoluted on how everything plays out. For example, I, there's a tutorial for each one, and I did the tutorial for each one. Uh, that being said, I tried to recreate what I did in the tutorial, and I got stuck. Um, I created a rail, which is the drop-off point for anything that you mine out. So you've got these unrefined ores going along this rail slash conveyor belt. Then you've got this rock crusher, which will crush all of that into uh, separate things. Stone, iron, coal, whatever. Then you go into an ore sorter, which supposedly separates it into separate pads. So it's like a splitter, but it sorts it. Okay. Now I'm sitting there. I created this ore splitter, this ore sorter, and I'm clicking on the sort buttons and the menu isn't coming up for me to choose what, what ore goes in what direction. I'm like, what the heck? So after 10 minutes of playing around, I finally figured out, oh, you have to create the output rails first, connect them to the warehouse. And once you do that, then the menu pops up. I'm like, Really, you have to create the the rails leading out first. Otherwise, the the sort menu is complete. The filter menu is completely blank, and it doesn't pop up. Completely unresponsive and unfriendly to a new player. So, like, there's a number of desi design decisions in this game that make me scratch my head. Another example: middle mouse button is ping the map. Ping the map. I'm sitting there using my middle mouse button trying to rotate the camera on a regular basis and end up pinging something. Not what I want to do. So the default RTS controls are just, again, asinine. I, I don't understand. It's like the people behind this game played, I guess, RTSs growing up. 
but forgot what an RTS was. They were so focused on this whole new cooperative element that they forgot what an RTS was and how to play one. Because I'm sitting there trying to rotate the map with with the middle mouse button, trying to rotate it, and no, it, it's it's pinging the map. Instead, you have to hold in Q and E to rotate the map that way. Just It just doesn't work for me, I'm sorry. That particular control scheme, just, it's, no. Um... And again, the the selecting of mining, like when you're mining out rock underground, you have to right-click on each individual piece that you want to mine out. You can't drag, you can't click and drag the right mouse button to select multiple blocks like you can in, say, Dungeon. Ever play the Dungeon series, which is like a you're the evil guy and you're building this dungeon and you're mining out you know, rock and the like. I was expecting controls similar to that. No, you have to click on each individual rock piece that you want to mine out. Again, asinine. Why not click drag and select multiple pieces? It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, another thing that's annoying, um, if you do select multiple things to dig out and then you click on a miner, your miners in this game, they build the machinery underground. So rather than having one universal worker unit, the miners will build specific things to their group. The um, builders are designed more for the surface for the farming stuff. Um, so instead of having this one universal worker unit, the people that mine things out, the people that put things on the conveyor belt, they also are in charge of building things. And when you're queuing stuff up to be built, if they're mining, they'll completely ignore the build order and get to the building after they're done mining. So, like, the the priorities are also a bit screwed up. So that's why I said earlier, like, the AI right now just doesn't make any sense. And um, if you if you if if they're in the middle of building something and you tell them to do something else, like, say, I want to build this as well, they'll go and build the new thing, but then they'll leave the, the previous thing unbuilt until you tell them to manually start building it again. Games like Rise of Nations, which are several years old, 20, 10, 20 years old, that game is smart enough to realize, hey, there's an unfinished building here. There are workers near it. They'll finish building that as well. Like games from Days of Yore are doing that. Why can't an RTS in 2020 do that? So, like I said, this game is a cool concept. But anything past that is unfinished and unplayable in my opinion. I have two to three hours in this game. And a lot of that was me trying to figure out how to play it. I know my RTSs. I grew up with Warcraft, Warcraft 2, Starcraft, Starcraft 2, Rise of Nations. I could go on and on and on. I'm, I know my real-time strategy games. This game, in every sense of the word, does not feel like a fleshed-out RTS. I like the concept. I like what it's trying to do. But it's... The RTS element isn't there yet, and that's what's frustrating. I, I will be happy to come back to this later when the game is patched up, when it feels playable. Um, as of right now, no, I don't recommend it at the price point. Um, I will say that there is single player. When you do play single player, you'll play as all three classes, and it's possible that that's my mistake for doing that. Um, there's a sandbox mode, which is also good, meaning that you can go into it without being attacked. Like, there's a survival mode, where you'll constantly be attacked as you're trying to do this. Um, but there's also a sandbox mode where you can practice, and I like that. Okay? That's what I've been playing on for the last three hours, and it took me two hours just to get my mining up and running to a respectable place, to where I can actually support the other two classes. So it's like... Again, the game, it just feels overly convoluted. And, like, I like what it tries to do, but I don't think it's designed well enough yet to be fluid and uh, just user-friendly. So, yeah, I mean, Dwarfheim, I, again, I'm not trying to discourage people from it because it's a cool idea. I just don't think it's ready for consumption yet. I think it's way too early access. I mean, there's early access, and then there's, like, alpha. I, this game advertises itself as a beta. I don't think it's really beta. Mm -mm. I, I think it's more, like, this is prototype level. I've seen better betas than this, and it's this is not here yet. 
That being said, I am excited for it. I do want to see more. I want to come back to it later. I would love to play some co-op with, you know, other people. Um, there are people reporting that queue times are extremely long right now and they can't find anyone to play with. This being an online cooperative game, that's a problem as well, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, but again, there is single player modes, but typically you have to play all three classes to do that, and that can be overwhelming for a first time player. If you do pick up this game, my advice is do the tutorials for each of the, each of the three classes, then go into sandbox and take your time with that. That's what I did, and even then I still had issues figuring things out. But after three or four hours, I started getting the hang of it. There's a tech tree, there's different uh, things you can mine out, and you need this particular ore or this particular ingot, whatever, to uh, research this or to build this structure, what have you. That's fine, but just be warned, there's a bit of a learning curve here. And it's not at all intuitive. So, again, my advice is to wait. My, that's my advice, but you do you, it's your money. Um, but I'll be happy to come back to it later, once it's a little bit more fleshed out. If you guys haven't already, subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.